Welcome to the first smartphone of the next generation. It's built by Qualcomm to show you their new Snapdragon 865 chip, which you're gonna be seeing in phones next year. So thanks to Qualcomm for sponsoring this video and let me show you the five main things it can do. It's of course faster than any current Android chip out there. Even if you just bought a phone two weeks ago, you could expect this to have graphics and CPU about 25% quicker, but the actual gains will often feel like more than that. The 865 expands the existing suite of Snapdragon Elite gaming features. You'll have things like Game Color Plus, so with no hit to performance and nothing needed from developers, all games will just have richer graphics. There's something called forward rendering, which means games can now use sophisticated lighting effects that would have only been possible on PCs before. And as a cherry on top, the 865 also has updatable graphics drivers, which means you can update your phone's graphics the same way you would update your other applications. So as new games come out, you'll get specific updates that tweak performance for them. But gaming is only one of the goals here. Something you might have noticed, in 2019 especially, is that the cameras on smartphones are becoming a bigger focus than ever. Phone makers are using 48, 64, and even 108 megapixel sensors, and this new chipset will let your phone better process all of that information. You could loosely split the camera improvements here into two categories, upgrades that make existing features better and just straight up new features. You're already used to being able to record videos at 4K resolution. Some phones can do this at 30 frames per second, some can even do it at 60, but Snapdragon 865 powered phones can do this at 120 frames per second. Now, I'm not sure if that's something I'd keep on by default, but 120 frames per second means you can slow the video down afterwards and effectively get slow-mo footage in this full-fat resolution. And if you wanted to take super slow motion, it also supports 960 frames per second, like we've seen on some phones already, but instead of just recording short bursts of this, you'll be able to record it continuously. You could literally do this for 10 minutes straight, and it's just thanks to better chip architecture, which keeps the whole thing running cooler. There's also a subtler benefit from having a more powerful chip. You can take photos and videos at the same time. Let's say you were recording a 4K HDR video, but then you realize you actually want to capture a still image from a part of it. Instead of just saving what is effectively one still frame from this video, you'll now have the power to simultaneously snap full 64 megapixel photos. So that stuff is pretty iterative, but the 865 also creates a few new camera opportunities. It means you can now optically zoom in without that weird juddering that we've seen in past generations, really smooth zoom. It means that when you're recording these videos, you can record with Dolby Vision, which is considered by many the current benchmark for color science. To give you an idea of the implication, most big budget movies you see in the cinema are shot in a flat raw format, and then they're taken to Dolby so that Dolby can implement their colors bit by bit for every single scene. This Snapdragon chip lets you directly record with this color science baked in. Another cool feature is that when you take portrait mode shots in your next phone, you'll be able to save it as a single file containing not just the final portrait mode photo, but the same shot without the portrait mode effect, data on where the photo was taken, and the actual depth map your phone captured. So even 10 years later, you could readjust that portrait mode effect. Plus, you can take 200 megapixel resolution photos and 8K resolution video at smooth 30 frames per second. No biggie. Now, something that ties quite closely into the camera experience is AI. The Snapdragon 865 has about two times the AI performance versus current gen, and generally the idea of this is to make your life easier without you needing to think about what's happening. For example, when taking a photo, this AI engine enables semantic segmentation, or in other words, the ability to identify each object in a photo separately and correct them accordingly. It'll literally look at each individual pixel in your shot, decide whether it's a hair and it needs sharpening, or a skin tone that could do with softening, and it happens almost instantly. There's a more general benefit to this AI though. You might have noticed another big smartphone trend is the move to more aware devices. Google's Pixel 4, for example, uses radar to know when you're nearby, and the 865 chip aligns with that idea quite nicely. It has a completely new sensing hub. Part of the chip is just dedicated to making your phone more contextually aware of what's happening around. So background tasks like continuously checking GPS location or listening out for your voice can now be done with not just less power consumption, but also better. Your phone will more effectively not just pick up what you're saying, but also understand it. And this ties into real-time translation. 
You've probably seen something like this before. Google's lens can already translate what it sees, but the difference now is that your phone can translate not just written text, but your voice with no internet connection, with zero delay, all whilst retaining your natural way of speaking. The footage you're seeing here is just me talking into a microphone and then the phone is giving me back exactly what I'm saying, but in Chinese. The final and probably coolest AI feature I saw was the evolution to the augmented reality emojis you're probably used to. This next generation phone was able to track micro expressions on my face in real time, things like a slight smirk or even an eye roll. The next pillar of the Snapdragon 865 is connectivity, and it's bigger than you think. There's the expected 5G speed improvements. We're talking a theoretical download speed of 7.5 gigabits per second. And for context, that is fast enough to download an HD Netflix movie in just a few seconds. The chipset is built for consistent connectivity and better coverage. And I'm not just talking 5G coverage. This X55 modem it uses is also made to deliver the best in class 4G signal. And because this one solution handles both 4G and 5G, it can seamlessly use both of them with little power draw. So I've talked about speed, cameras, artificial intelligence, and connectivity, but a new generation of chips also comes with a lot of all round improvements. So here are some of my favorites with the Snapdragon 865. It supports even higher quality displays. There's been a push recently towards fluid 90 Hertz and even 120 Hertz screens in the last couple of years, but we can now stretch that all the way to a quad HD plus display at 144 Hertz. Then you've got better battery life. The way the 865 is built, almost everything on your phone is handled with better power efficiency. For example, there's a 16% battery saving while recording video, and I imagine the benefits whilst on standby will be even greater. And finally, on a bit of a side note, as well as the 865, Qualcomm also announced their next generation of fingerprint scanner, the 3D Sonic Max, which basically has many times the scanning area of current gen technology and can even allow for two finger authentication, which would increase security from a one in 50,000 false acceptance rate to a tiny one in a million. So that's the Snapdragon 865. It's the backbone of potentially the phone of your dreams. And it'll be interesting to see how companies in the next year take advantage of it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.